Hello, my name is Amir Saman Mirjalili. Here I'm going to present my Mechatronics final project. The goal of this project is to simulate the Scala robot, which is a type of serial manipulator, to write a text or in general uh, drawing an object. Uh, this simulation is done uh, in the combination of MATLAB Simulink and Simescape Multibody. The topics that we are going to talk about are first, uh, what is a SCAR robot and uh, its structure? Uh, the second is the drawing application and how a robot understands to draw something. Uh, third is uh, how we can prepare our trajectory and modify it so it can be drawable in this MATLAB simulation. Next is how we can command the robot joints in order to track our trajectory. Uh, the next topic is uh, work space analysis, uh, which is which is necessary for the drawing application, so we can be sure that our draw is fitting well inside the robot work space. And the final topic is uh, how we did this simulation inside MATLAB and inside Simulink and Simescape. Uh, a common uh, SCARA robot, as we can see in uh, figure 1, is a type of serial robot. However, there is also a parallel configuration for this robot. This robot, as we can see, uh, has four degrees of freedom uh, and has four uh, joints, which three of them are revolute and one of them are prismatic joints. Uh, now let's uh, explain how it is possible uh, to tell our robot to draw an object. Uh, for this purpose, uh, we usually have a trajectory uh, which is our drawing object and here the goal is to calculate each joint motion so we can track our trajectory correctly. In robotics nomenclature we sometimes refer to this process as inverse kinematics analysis. Uh, we will further uh, explain how this inverse kinematics analysis will apply it here. And now let's uh, discuss about the steps that we went through to uh, simulate our robot. Uh, the first step here is preparing the trajectory uh, for the drawing. Uh, I use a third party software for this purpose. Uh, which called Ink Space. Uh, if I open this software, uh, as you can see, I write a text here. Uh, and the uh, useful thing in this software is that it can save this uh, text as DXF format. So, as you can see, here is the format that we used uh, for our uh, drawing application. Uh, this format is useful because it, it is contained the coordinates that it, that we need for our simulation. So yes, if we save this uh, text in DXF format, we can go back to MATLAB and simply open this uh, file uh, with the help of the DXF tool. Uh, which can be downloaded in MATLAB app market. So after we use this tool to open our file, we can see it simply opened the text we earlier uh, saved in, in Inkspace software. Uh, this is a useful thing to have here. Uh, as you can see, uh, here we uh, see that our object for drawing uh, which is obviously a text. Uh, it, it consists of uh, many lines. Uh, if we zoom this, uh, it's obviously 
uh, can be seen that it consists of lines for the straight portions and for the curved portions it consists of sp lines as you can see here in this uh, section so we need each part data for our application in th for this purpose we uh, can simply uh, extract uh, each line and spline coordinates uh, and I did this with these two portion of codes which simply uh, extract our uh, needed data uh, so these codes uh, extract each line and spline data and I saved this uh, data in a MATLAB uh, array structure contains of two fields y and x as we can see here okay uh, it's important to note here uh, further in our analysis uh, I use this variable uh, this trage, trage variable in my uh, simlink blocks uh, in MATLAB uh, if each array member doesn't equal in size uh, it will prompt an error so I modify the trash array so it can be equal in size so this portion of code will solve our issue and make each member equal in size okay the next topic we are going to talk about is uh, inverse kinematic analysis for our scanner robot. Uh, here we are going to explain how we manage to uh, command our robot in order to move and track our trajectory. Uh, so before we start, it is important to define some robotics terms that apply here. Uh, the first term uh, is n effector. N effector is a type of device that attached to our end of robotic arm so our robot can interact with the environment. Uh, for example, here, uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, the N effector is a type of gripper. And for our application, which is a drawing application, the N effector might be a pen or pencil, something similar. The next term we use here is joint parameters. So what we mean uh, by joint parameter is the movement, amount of movement for each joint. So for example, here our robot has four joints, uh, which three of them are regular joint and one of them are prismatic joint. Uh, so uh, for the regular joints, the joint parameter is the amount of angle that each joint turns uh, from its initial position and for the prismatic joints the joint parameter is a displacement uh, that uh, each joint move from again its initial uh, position okay now uh, we can define what is inverse kinematics uh, in inverse kinematic, the goal is to uh, calculate each joint parameter uh, by using a given n effector position and orientation. Uh, so here uh, we use a method for this uh, inverse kinematic analysis. Uh, this method is popular in kinematics, which is called dynamic Hart and Beck method. Okay, after we apply this method and some calculation and simplification, uh, we finally reach to these four equations uh, which relate the joint parameters uh, which are at the left side of the equation to the uh, robot structures, uh, robot dimensions and structure 
uh, and also robot and effector position. Uh, so these four uh, equations uh, will be used uh, next in our simulic simulations. Okay, uh, in next topic uh, we are going to talk about robot workspace. So uh, what we mean by workspace uh, is all set of possible positions that our robot uh, N effector can reach in environment. So why uh, this is matter? Why this is important? It is important because uh, we want to make sure our uh, drawing object fit correctly inside our robot workspace. So uh, for this purpose, uh, I used MATLAB robotic toolbox in order to model our robot uh, joints and links. So this uh, portion of code. Uh, will do the job for us. Now after we modeled uh, our robot structure, we can uh, use the, the function that I wrote here uh, to generate our robot workspace. So what this function does is uh, using a, some sort of Monte Carlo uh, method uh, to generate a random values uh, for each joint and uh, store the n effector position as this function output. Okay, now uh, I really don't want to run this uh, code because it takes uh, much time to load, so I just here uh, show the final results. As you can see in this plot, uh, we generate uh, every possible point uh, that our end effector can reach. Okay, let's uh, let me open the original plot here. Okay. Now here we put uh, two arrangements of our scalar robot. In each of these arrangements, our links uh, showed with a thin line and our joints showed with these RGB frames and the purple frames is our n effector position uh, except for that one in the middle of the circle which is represents our base frame and it is uh, of course fixed on the ground uh, so for our first configuration here uh, our robot joints adjusted in a way uh, so that our N effector uh, can position on the minimum radial distance uh, from the base frame. And in opposite, uh, in second configuration, our robot adjusted so that N effector uh, position on the maximum radial distance from the base frame. Here, every point uh, between minimum and maximum radial distance can be reached uh, by our robot. And uh, we must be sure uh, that our drawing object fit uh, exactly in this workspace. Okay, for this purpose, let me show you the next figure here. Okay. Here I add our drawing object to this figure and you can see that it's completely fit in our workspace. And so we have no worries about any troubles in our simulation. In last topic, uh, we are going to talk about how we did our simulation in MATLAB Simulink and Simescape. So uh, in Simescape Multibody, as the, some audiences might know, uh, Simescape uh, is a place that we can use to uh, model our physical robots uh, like in reality. So here uh, we model our robot body and joints and connect them to each other uh, based on the real ro SCARA robot. Uh, after we create uh, our robot model in Simescape, we use this model as a subsystem in our main 
Simulink model. So here, as you can see, uh, uh, this model consists of three blocks. Uh, so, for example, the first one is our uh, trajectory generation block, which is a type of uh, a state chart in MATLAB Simulink. So this block is responsible uh, for uh, creating our trajectory data and this data is given to the next block which is responsible for our uh, inverse kinematics calculations. So after uh, our kinematic calculations uh, is complete, uh, the uh, joint parameters then calculated and is given to our robot model. So now our robot will start to move and track our trajectory. Now let's uh, talk about the details behind each block. So if I open my Simlink model, as you can see here, the first block here is a type of Simlink stack chart block. This block is responsible for our trajectory generation. So if I open this block, you can see that it consists of two states. Uh, so if you recall from our previous explanation, uh, we say that our trajectory composed from so many lines and splines. Uh, so what happened here at the beginning of our simulation, this default transition will activate uh, this state. So here our robot will receive its first line or curve to track. So after the track completed, the next state will switch to the next track. So our robot will switch to the next line or curve of our drawing object. Uh, now, after our simulation starts, uh, for each step time, uh, our trajectory will be initialized from uh, this state chart block. And this data will be given uh, to the next block, which is responsible uh, for our inverse kinematics calculation. So this block contains a MATLAB uh, function block and if I open this block we uh, wrote the code for all those equations that we saw earlier in our inverse kinematics section. So here our joint parameters will be calculated and uh, this data uh, will be given to the next block which is our um, Simescape model of our SCALA robot. Uh, so now, if I run this simulation, uh, we can see the final results here. So, this is our robot model and uh, the end of our end effector, which is a kind of pen, uh, will now start to Drawn our object. Uh, yes, and this is our Scar Robot simulation. Thank you all for listening.